because of my birthday, which is in December, I started school when I was uh, five years old. And I remember distinctly my mother giving me my little lunch kit my first day in school, walked in the boys' basement and promptly got the tar beat out of me by two really good native guys that were turned out to be good buddies after. Chiefer Cunningham and Melvin Bailey. Good guys, still alive today, I might add. School life was very regimented. Um, we had a, an old English chap by the name of Longton who was a school principal and I think he probably ran it uh, like they'd run a school in, uh, in England, as a matter of fact. So, as I say, it was very regimented. We all lined up in the morning um, in the boys' basement if it, if it was uh, inclement weather, if it was nice weather, uh, sometimes outside. And uh, we had monitors and uh, people that made sure we stayed in line. And then the bell rang and we all marched up uh, into our classes. Good school. I came from, uh, as I said, the small mining town where we had grade 1 to 11 in the same room, one room, one teacher. And when we came to Hammond School, we had a room for everybody except grade 5 and 6, and they were doubled up. And that's because the principal was the teacher, which they don't do that kind of thing now. But yeah, so it was a big school with full basement. Oddly enough, I never did, but I had an office at the Hammond Elementary School when we had the Hammond Community School Association. Uh, and, but all three of my children went there. Most of my grandchildren went to Hammond Elementary School, and now I have two great-grandchildren attending Hammond Elementary School. I went to school at Hammond Elementary, and you to be honest with you, Fred, I don't know where my mother went to school at, but I believe they went to school there too. The original Hammond School, and I started there in, I guess, 1944, I think, 45, and spent my uh, six years of, first years of education there. The school itself, I remember Mr. Longton's bell. I can remember playing baseball at lunch hour. I used to run home, and uh, we lived probably uh, maybe 500 yards, maybe a quarter mile away from where the school was. I used to run home, have my lunch, and be back at school before 10 after 12 to be first up in the baseball park at lunch hour. Well, I would, I'd walk to school with my neighbors and I never, I don't remember my parents ever taking me to school or anything. It, the, maybe the grade one, I would walk to school with the neighbors and oh, I loved it. It was um, close by and, and the teachers were great. In fact, my grade four teacher, Miss McIntyre, inspired me to become a teacher. Ever since, you know, I decided that's what I wanted to do and I, focused all my uh, courses on becoming a teacher and uh, joined the uh, teachers club in the high school and <laughs> I mean it was just a straight focus all the way along and and so I did end up teaching for quite a few years. The elementary school, yes I went was to grade one to six in the school there and um, I walked to school and I uh, walked home for lunch. Uh, wasn't very far. It was uh, Maple Crescent, yeah. And um, yes, Miss McKenzie and Miss Ostring and um, oh my goodness, Miss Best was my grade one teacher. And uh, Mr. Graham, he taught us in the last year of school there. Um, I don't know, I can't remember if that was grade, I think it was grade six, yes. And he was a wonderful, he was also the principal of the school and he was a very nice man. I had a, my grade three teacher was just, she was beautiful to start with. As a the little boy, I was starting to, you know, look at girls and, but, uh, uh, up till then, I couldn't read worth, you know, nothing. And she set me aside and, and uh, uh, noon hours and, 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 you know, what you call it, periods. And, uh, and she got me reading. And then she went and talked to the, the librarian that was up in the, in the, right next to or part of the Haney, Haney Hall there, the big hall. And, uh, and so she got a bunch of books that I would read. They were simple enough, but interesting enough for, for a young kid. 
and I got reading, and that's it carried on. And my brother and sister, we all went to that elementary school in Hammond, and uh, one of the teachers was the same teacher in grade three. She flunked my aunts, myself, my brother. We never got, we always had to repeat grade three, all of us. <laughs> I don't know what my dad did to her one. It must have been something they did in their youth. <laughs> It was so integrated, like you see some of these pictures here, there was Chinese, there was East Indians, there was Native Indians. We all played, got along, we went down to their yards and played in their yards and stuff. There was, it was just an integration of everybody. There was no segregation sort of thing. We're just, you know, you'd, you know, you'd, and it, everybody kind of, most people worked in the mill. <coughs> and. At five o'clock, the mill whistle went off. That's when you had to be home for supper. But you seemed to be always late for supper and always didn't hear the whistle. You know, that, that was a standard excuse, but you could hear the whistle in Port Coquitlam, sort of.